mentioned this to all of you is that I took the zip lock, I cut off the bottom and I cut off one side. And the reason I did that is because I want easy access into this into this bag. I don't want to have to work at it. When you have to get inside of a bag all the time through the top, it sometimes can get in your way. So I recommend that you um, take a bag, cut it off, and it'll make an easy workspace for you. Um, when do you guys have a plastic spoon on your table? Let me borrow a plastic spoon. Thank you. These break, by the way. They break. I, I, I had some people this morning put a little too much pressure on the plastic spoon, and they'll snap, so be careful. Um, but you won't need to put a lot of pressure on it. Working with marzipan is, um, as I say, it's a little bit of an oily experience here. Um, it is a little oily on the surface, especially as you work with it, as you knead it. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to form this into something of a cone shape. Yeah, as you can see, a little bit of a cone shape. And I'm just going to take this and smash it down on the table to make, make it stick. And what I'm doing here is I'm making an internal um, bud for a rose. Now, roses don't typically have a bud inside. Um, not real roses don't. But that's because real roses have lots of petals that they can use to cover up um, the inside. If a rose is allowed to blossom completely, it opens up all the way and all you have inside are pestles and stamens and, you know, just like any flower. But because we don't have that and we're working with marzipan, we make a little internal um, cone here, like a little, a little bud to kind of support everything. From there, I'm going to try to take this and make a series of, of petals out of this marzipan. And uh, I think you'll find that there's some things to be concerned with when it comes to making these petals. First of all, um, petals on any flower typically are in odd numbers, something to be aware of. You almost never see four or two or six. You always see one, three, five, or eight. Or one, three, five, or seven. <laughs> um, so take a look at your clover, clover leaves. Always three leaves, right? Fours are very uncommon. Yeah, fours are very uncommon. When you do find a four leaf clover, it's like once in a while, you know? And that's just an anomaly. That's just a weird freak of nature. So, and then you pick it, and then there's, you know, one less four leaf clover in the world. So you'll find that um, also when it comes to things like, uh, oh, all kinds of flowers. Uh, orchids have five, five petals. Um, Forget-me-not, Stephanotis, uh, Forsythias, all kinds of things have five petals, rarely six. So what we're going to do is stick with the odd numbers. In roses, what we'll do is we'll have a central petal that goes around the cone. That's going to hide the cone itself, and it's just going to form that first internal uh, shape of a bud that's inside there. Then we're going to have three that go on the outside of that, and then we're going to have five that go on, side, on the outside of that. So always working in those odd numbers. Now, the way I'm going to make a petal, um, I, got, I just make this into a little ball, and I'm going to put these inside so they don't dry out. Got all these little pieces here. That's the reason I cut this open. So much easier to get access to it. I like to work inside two sheets of plastic like this. To me, it works better. What I'm going to do is take that little ball I had. And I'm going to flatten it down. I'm going to leave one side rather thick, and the other side, I'm going to, as as I flatten it out with my spoon, I'm going to taper the marzipan down so that. It's like a nice, even taper. I'm also going to make the very end, the very edge, very thin, paper thin. How thick is a, is a rose petal? Not. Not, right? It's really thin. Inside the rose petal, if you look at it through a microscope, it's got lots and lots of little struts that hold it up and make it rigid. But we're working with marzipan, so we don't have all those little struts inside. So what we have to do is, yes, I want to make the edge look thin, to create the illusion that it's thin. 
but I want to also leave the center, the middle of my pedal, fairly thick so it will support its own weight. If it's too thin, it's just going to it's going to stand up at first, and that's going to just bend right over, and that's no fun. So um, we're going to go ahead and leave that center fairly thick. As you can see, the uh, end of it here, the, the very the very edge is very very thin, but the middle is fairly fairly thick still. You can see it's somewhat translucent on the edge, and I do that intentionally to create that illusion that it's actually got some. It's actually a real rose petal. But in real nature, it wouldn't be this thin on the, this thick on the bottom. What it reminds me of is like, I don't know if you ever looked at a straight razor. Uh, the old-fashioned straight razors are like this. They're thick at the, at the spine, but they're very, very thin at the, at the edge. Same thing with our chef knife. It's like that. Thick at the spine, thin at the edge. So if you make it like your chef knife, you'll have the right amount of thickness in the center to offer some support. I'm going to first take this. I'm going to... I'm going to just gently make this a little wider. I want to make sure it's going to make it all the way around that bud. And right now, it's pretty tall. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by wrapping this around the base of this uh, little cone. Now, marzipan is really wonderful. It sticks to itself. You don't need any glue or any help of any kind. I can just place it on here, kind of give it a little press, and it sticks just like that. The problem with that is, once it sticks, you can't pull it off or it'll tear. Um, good example of that, if I take two pieces of marzipan here, now let's say I just take them, they're completely separate, and I stick them together a little bit. If I want to pull it apart, as you can see, it tears. It doesn't have, it, it, it sticks really well, even though it's oily. Uh, it sticks to itself quite well. So I've stuck this, uh, uh, pedal here to the cone and I've wrapped it around here in the top very tightly so it comes to almost to a close at the very top and I'm going to wrap this around here all the way around I want to completely enclose this cone I don't want to even see it on the inside so when you look down from the top you shouldn't be able to see that cone down there it should be just you know completely enclosed by this pedal and to add a touch of realism, I'm just going to leave it slightly open on one side. So on this side over here, it's just hanging open a little bit. And looking down in there, I can barely see that cone. I shouldn't be able to really see it at all. But most people won't even notice it. It's just showing a little bit. So there's my first petal. Let's get to the others. We're going to put three more on the outside of this. They're about the same size. The first one should be a little bigger, I think, because it needs to go all the way around that cone. So it's good to have a little bit larger um, just to make sure it's going to make, you know. Um, if it's not big enough, you might just want to ball it back up again, add a little more marzipan to it, and make it a little larger so you'd be able to get all the way around. Because that's the only one that really has to make it the distance. Um, the others, this, these three that are going around now on this on the outside are going to have to be they're going to be taking up about a third of the space around here. So they, have to, they get to share all that space, and they don't really need to be quite as large. So I'm just going to go ahead and get these ready. This does get a little oily. So being so oily, it's hard to even roll it into a ball. There we go. You can see why I kind of measure these things out ahead of time. Kind of get them all, you know, figured out how big I want to make them. I know people who will make all the petals first before they even assemble the flower. They'll just go and get all their petals made, and that way it's all done, and then they'll just assemble. I personally will make them at one, one grouping at a time. So I made my first one. I've got these three ready to go. Let's make all three of these at the same time. I kind of flatten it down with my thumb, just kind of leaving one side a little flatter than the other, and I'll use my spoon as a tool to help just smooth it down. Stretching out the marzipan inside the plastic bag, and then of course really concentrating on that edge to get the edge thin.
All right, on to the next one. I'll tell you, you get really good at this once you make a hundred or so of these little pedals. Here's the third one. By the time I put these three on, it'll really start to take, take on the appearance of a rose. Now, why a rose? Why not an orchid? Why not a calla lily? Why not a... Rose flower. It's very basic, right? Rose is very classic. Everybody wants roses. So because it's so <laughs> common, it's also, believe it or not, one of the harder flowers to make. Or the orchids, I think, are one. Of, I think is the orchids are the hardest I know of. Um, I, I have great difficulty making orchids. They're just very complicated. Um, but that's because they are they are very unique flowers. But roses to me are quite quite challenging. Um, are roses always perfect? No. You see the shape of this, this petal? It's got kind of a jagged edge. Is that common in nature? Yes. Yeah. Bugs, right? They eat, they eat roses. They come along and nibble at them, and aphids, things like that. So I don't worry if it's got a little bit of a jagged edge, because it's going to look all that much more natural. I'd rather have that than have something so perfect it looks like it's not real, you know? My next three here are going to be about the same height as my center. Um, before I place it on, I'm going to kind of figure out where I'd like it to be. And I want the center to be very prominent, but I also want these side petals to work well with it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this one on right here. And I'm leaving one side completely open so that I can fit the next one underneath it. I'd like to be able to overlap them a little bit. Now I know the bottoms here are thick. Don't worry about that. We'll be trimming the bottom off later. But for now, the, this one's open, so I'm going to kind of slide this one underneath the first one. I'll bring that around. So we give it a little more realism, I'm going to kind of take this one and kind of make the pedal flip out a little bit, leaving this wide open. That third one's going to go on right in here and cover that last section. So I'm just doing a little, little custom work as I go here. What I'm doing is flattening it down just a little bit and widening it slightly so I can make sure it fits well in here. So as I bring those together now and I close it up, just be keenly aware of the fact that the marzipan will stick to itself the minute it touches another part of the rose. So you don't want to have things stick together unless you really want them to stick together. To make it look more realistic, of course, I'm going to flip out uh, some of these petals to give them a little more realism. And I'm just going to give it a little gentle pinch all the way around here to kind of bring that together. Now for those of you who have difficulty seeing it at this point, this is what it starts looking like. <coughs> you know, it starts to look like a rose. It starts to take on that appearance. Does it have to look exactly like a rose? Absolutely perfect? Well, yes. no. I mean, yes, yes, I mean I'd like it to be I'd like it to be uh, botanically correct, right? But at the same time, um, how real does it have to be to fool someone's eye? This has to be part of the <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if I'm standing back here, if it looks reasonably well, reasonably like a rose, I'm going to pretty much believe it looks like a rose. So I'm not looking necessarily, I mean, I'd like it to be that botanically correct, but the reality is, is that we're fooling the eye. That's the whole point, is that we're, gonna, we're creating the illusion of realism there. So we're going to try and make it you know, realistic, sure, but it's not, not everything's going to be perfectly realistic. We're going to try, but we really just need to fool the guests a little bit. Um, they're getting, people are amazed when they see this stuff. Take your average person. Think about someone, let's say, in your family who has no experience at all in pastry. At all. They've never, never seen this kind of stuff.